All right, so going back to uh, some of the standing stuff that we talked about before. Uh, so we sort of intro Zanzong as um, a larger thing. Uh, I want to talk about um, some of the, the alternates that we can do then too. So we're going to go over kind of two sort of sets of things and just kind of talk about those and set those up. And then I'll have other you know things where we'll actually do them. Uh, this first one I want to talk about, and I have other videos and some of this other stuff. I'm kind of condensing and keeping things kind of a little tighter in with this. Is uh, what we considered the each one. Now we talked about this a little bit with when we just sort of intro the Zanzong, and it's created uh, by people who did uh, Xingyi. And uh, you know, there's a lot of sort of static, you know, the standing things. Uh, if you do research on it, you'll see people, it's like very slow, even slower moving. Uh, then you'll see like Yang style Taiji, for instance. Uh, in some instances, oh, this is bugging me, this is it. Closed. Sorry, forgot that I had to open that. Uh, so, uh, so, Xingyi Chuan. Xingyi is um, the shape or the form, and then the intent or the mind or the sort of you know, an internal purpose of that. So that's based on the five elements, fists. Uh, in Chinese sort of philosophy, there's not four elements that we're used to, you know, like air, earth, water, fire. There's metal, and that create, there's a creative cycle and a destructive cycle. So if you see, you know, a five-pointed star in a circle, it's not evil, it's not freaking you out, it's not going to send you anywhere bad. What it's doing is it, it's, it's almost like a... Um, uh, uh, sort of pre-European enlightenment periodic table almost because it describes interactions of these sort of core idealized elements. You know, it breaks down even further when you get into like the I Ching and, and stuff like that. But basically you have metal and metal creates water. So think of like condensation. Water feeds wood, wood feeds into the fire, you know, fires help kind of enrich the earth and metal is birthed out of the ground. So that's your creative cycle. The destructive cycle in that would be metal chops wood, wood breaks up earth, earth dams water, water quenches fire, fire melts metal. So that's the sort of basis of, of the intent of, of Xingyi. And then there's either 12 or 10, the Xingyi I practice Sun style from Sun Lutong has 12 animals. And that's based on the, you know, the foundation is the the five elements. And then, you know, the sort of almost shamanic sort of intent, that E, of like the animals involved. They all have a different purpose. You know, snake, it's like coily, but shoots out very quickly. You know, the sparrowhawk can swoop down, up and swoop down and come down. You know, the twill or, you know, water lizard, eel, crocodile has, you know, that sort of nice, you know, if you ever watch, they kind of have this going. So that fluid swimming sort of thing that can also catch you in. So this is, that's sort of the core of Xing Yi. So what they did is, and I'm blanking on the guy's name right now. So what they did was, was they took that sort of base idea and, and that's sort of, okay, well, how can we then make that E, that intent part, more intense and bring that into the body more? And they, they came up with these eight sort of standing postures as the basis. And those would then, uh, you, can, you can see once you play other things in Taiji and Xingyi and Bagua and, and other sort of Chinese martial arts, you can see how this could be, you know, if you took the 200... Taoist standing postures and kind of boiled them down to what would might be a foundation of even that. This kind of seems, to me at least, and I could be coming at this from a completely wrong, ignorant point of view, but for me at least, I can understand how this would be if the 200 postures were a basis for sort of internal martial arts and Taoist practices. This is sort of the, the basic of the basic then. Uh, so... And they, they go through the whole, all three sort of main body parts, uh, 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 sections include, uh, that the, the Dantians would be. So the Chinese don't usually go with the, the seven 
to 9 or 13, 12 or 13 chakras, they basically will talk, you'll see a lot of things about the three dantians. And now you can, all, you can have Dantians all over the place, but there's three sort of main ones. And they do correspond to the even-numbered chakras, the second, the fourth, and the sixth. Kind of sixth and seventh, because the top one kind of encompasses both the sort of sixth, which is like that third eye, but in, and the seventh, which would be that crown. I don't remember the, the sort of Indian names for them. But what we have here... We have the lower Dantian, you've heard me talk about tons of times. So it's, you know, navel's here, about two inches below, and then on that hotter line that's inside the body, you know, a couple inches in the body is the lower Dantian. That's the sort of money Dantian. You hear people in internals or Chinese sort of thoughts say, if they just go Dantian with no qualifiers, they're probably talking about that one, the lower one. That is, you know, the center of the body if you include the legs. Uh, some, you know, that's going to be a little bit different. My legs are a little bit longer than the torso, so it's kind of the way the proportion is. Still your center of gravity. So if you're thinking about now like Swai Jiao terms of trying to drop your weight and everything like that, that's where, that's what they're talking about for center of gravity and getting low. It's not just sort of a hip in general. It's that spot. That's where you kind of go. Playing push hands, the Tui Shou you know, that's what's kind of going to scoop and get under or, or move. That's where you want to move from in moving internal martial arts and Qigong. That's, that part is what leads, and the rest of it is sort of almost like a puppet of it. You know, as, as the energy comes up through the feet into the legs, the, the lower Dantian then is almost sort of like the circuit breaker. And then it goes out, you know, arms, you know, the hips, kicking with the legs or anything else like that. Um, sorry about that. I didn't turn that off. Uh, so that's the sort of here. Just Dantian, that's what we're talking about with that. So that's the second chakra. The fourth chakra or second Dantian, the middle Dantian is your heart. So you got, you know, your, your solar plexus here, the xiphoid process. Here's your stomach kind of spleens over here. You're like liver and pancreas on this side. So you have, you know, your the third chakra is like that solar plexus one here. Fourth one's the heart. And yeah, it's like kind of, but you know, heart's kind of off center. This is my left side. Heart's kind of off centered slightly to the left, about fist size. We're talking here in the center. Again, on that main hotter line in through the body. There's that one. Top one, again, that sort of third eye. So kind of here where the pineal or gland would be in the brain. And it does, uh, you know, kind of forward of that, like right in here, uh, there's, it's called like the mud ball cavity and there's some Taoist sort of meditation stuff you can do with that. But it, it's going to hit that and it's going to hit even a little bit of, of almost sort of, at the very least, the sort of bottom sort of skimming, um, uh, like sort of field maybe of that, that seventh one at the top. So those are your three Dantians. And now there's there's eight postures, and they're hitting places that correspond to all three of those dantians. So so we're working all those energy fields and getting those things to light up. Now I will usually tend to do the sequence a little bit different than might be seen. Uh, then I think was it, I, I was uh, doing some research, and I think I saw I want to say Bruce Kumar Francis again. Uh, kind of showing some of that and there's like kind of a sequence I've seen him do and, and some other people do. I the, the reason I go a little bit different is because the, those sequences kind of tend to end on like the upper ones and do the lower ones last. I kind of like, I like to end on something sinking low to reground everything down in that lower Dantian, bring my intent back down to lower Dantian. And I find when I teach these, uh, or at least bring them up in, in, in my classes and everything like that, having kind of going up and down a little bit helps kind of ease people who are, who are starting out sort of that tension in the shoulders and upper chest area and maybe even in the neck. You know, you get your traps and rhomboids in there. People aren't used to that. The levator scapulars around the sides with the shoulder blades. A lot of that stuff isn't used to holding these things. So keeping engaged... Well, giving a little bit of a break kind of seems to help as well 
uh, I'll introduce those like this isn't the sequence that we do but this is what we're going to do here so you can stay engaged without now kind of getting that <sighs> when is this going to earn sort of thing I, I want to I want to take out some of that <sighs> at first get the feelings going get the relaxation going and all that and then as time goes on start building that um, conditioning with it and then going with that uh, you know it gone are the times where oh okay so you want to learn Xing Yi from me then all you're going to do is splitting maybe or all you're going to do is Santi for like three years if you're lucky I'll show you some splitting and that's it you know those days are gone those days are gone where you come in and maybe I, I I'm practicing long form with my closed door students and maybe I let you watch or try for a few months and then you know if you keep up with this what it's learning is on your own thing if you don't learn it that's on you I'm going to play and you can learn it and not and if you want to progress and become like a closed door student or get anything out of the teacher you got to kind of prove it instead of like our mentality which is I'm paying you so F you give me everything I want right now sort of thing. And I know Chen Tao Wong will talk about when he trains, especially coming in to like the West, it was, okay, first I follow you, then you follow me. So you want to do all these big things, crazy things? Okay, we'll go over that and do these things. Then when it's like, oh crap, I don't know what's going on. Okay, now we can step back and do this in a proper sequence. So I'm, I'm kind of aware that maybe the way I train or the way I was taught because uh, my teacher and I are kind of similar in, in terms of how we like to train, which is kind of what would be seen kind of like a little, you guys are weird, like for most people, which is fine with me. Uh, but I recognize that not everyone's going to train like I do. And that's okay. Everyone's got their own sort of vehicle and, and how they want to use that vehicle for it. Great. I will try to make it as an accessible vehicle as I, as I am capable of doing, which, you know, you could argue is one side or the other uh, so the sequence we'll just kind of talk about the sequence here again we're not going to do either the the e-trend or the sort of um, I hesitate to use fighting stance sort of thing with it but that's kind of where the general idea is uh, the sort of ones we're, we're going to review them here and then I'll have separate videos where we kind of do like a guided meditation through them so the e tran ones, and again, so let me make a, a quick note about engagement with this. So if you're used to like weightlifting or something, engaging is, you know, if I'm doing, you know, if I'm, you know, doing, you know, side, side delt raises or anything like that, you know, make sure, you know, uh, here you go, Jeff Cavalier, athlete next, make sure the thumb is over the pinky when you do those. Um, you're thinking about that middle deltoid when you're doing that. You know, you're doing lat pull downs, you're thinking about the lats, you do... Um, uh, was those bench presses or anything like that? You're thinking and 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 working on engaging with, like the pecs to be able to move. So if oh, you're all of a sudden like your back's starting to get tired while you're doing bench presses, you're not thinking about the area you're supposed to do. There's almost a certain meditation with it if it's done right. You know, if you're doing planks, you're not just doing planks and kind of hit. You're you you've got to keep. It's not even really just flexing, but you got to. You, you got to know what muscles are being, oof, oh dear. Um, you have to know what muscles are being used in order to engage them properly. Same thing with internals as a general big idea, but the application of it is very different because we're using whole body and staying as relaxed as possible without being limp, without being just wet noodle sort of stuff. We don't be wet noodle, but we don't want to be very strong man either. There's a middle sort of laser path with that. That's kind of where you want to gauge things at. <coughs> so uh, I'll give you an example of engagement that I'll talk about that I'll, I've done with my classes before. So if I want to do a, a, a slightly larger sort of standing meditation thing and I have them do the zons on, what I'll say is that if this is too much for the time that we're doing, I have like one like hold like two, three hour meditation class with the guys is to kind of introduce them to stuff. I'm like, we're doing this for the 20 minutes that I stand this. You're probably not going to be able to, to do this for the whole 20 minutes and that's fine. I don't want to see this. <sighs> no good. 
for doing a meditation or internal work with that's no good because what you're doing you've just dumped everything out it's like if you're trying to take a bath and then instead of you know mixing the the soap or the salts or the scents or whatever you want to do right or the temperature of the water if it's not exactly right you pull the plug and let three quarters of it drain out before putting it in again you're wasting water you know, you're wasting, you know, uh, if you're gas or electric in terms of heating the water, you're wasting whatever stuff you're putting into the bath. It's like there's still maybe water in the tub and there's still maybe a decent temperature and stuff in it, but you're wasting ever, all the effort that you put in to get the tub right, to get the water right, you waste it because you pull the plug. So what I'll have them do is that I'll go with one of two other each one postures. One is the sort of more Pong one. So if, if you're having trouble relaxing, especially like the shoulders or the back, release down to like 45. That leaves a little bit of pressure off. But notice I'm still, I haven't changed my legs. I still have that slight bend in the knees and the, the width, the tailbone tucked in. I haven't changed my legs. And I'm still going to be breathing through here and focusing here. Or what I can do is circle down almost like you have like a big belly or a big pilates ball and you just roll around the outside of that now this is another one of the postures it lets off some of the the pressure in with some of the things that where tension might be but look look what my arms are doing there's still a circle all this is still a circle through my clavicle and pec into the shoulders, through the arms, connecting like, you know, the, the fingers are act, the energy is almost connecting through the hands and cre completing a circuit. And I'm keeping that circuit completed through here. Same as up here, the circuit's completed here. I've just kind of changed the plane from horizontal to coronal while staying engaged. And then when I'm ready, I can, with my breath, breathe in and sort of inflate back up. That's what I mean by engaged. So i give you another example from like Tai Chi. So if I'm playing Yang style, uh, brush knee, twist step, brush knee, twist step here. Now here with the hands, what you see a lot of the times you'll see this. Uh, it's dead arm, no good. You now have a complete sort of thing here and you've separated this out. All that sort of energy and intent that you had built up there just gets dumped right out now think about it like this one of the things i'll use to sort of illustrate this is like an actual martial application again even if people just want the meditative and relaxation and health part you still got to have some of the martial principle in it to be correct so what i'll say with that is now all of a sudden if you're someone's reaching out and you're deflecting you kind of grab the wrist pull down if you pull down and go to strike but you let go you freed them from what you just did you've you've literally let them go or given them the opportunity to get away to now sort of redirect or parry or 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 do some sort of reversal on you or just free them up and now just to have an attack even without that you've let that happen by disengaging so we don't want to disengage. We want to stay engaged. So uh, I'll go through the sequence from the each one uh, as I understand it. Now, there's probably a big gap between things, but as I understand it, well, it will very at the very least give you sort of a basis to work from. So we'll go from like an attention stance. Set your breathing first, like we've already talked about. Breathe in. So we get to that rounding inflation. So here's one. So my wrists are like right in front of my hips, like the quad part, like right in the inside. So here's one. I'm kind of almost like I'm holding, you know, holding a big dog. A big dog. I don't know why I'm talking like this. I don't know why I'm doing that. A big dog. There we go. So after whatever sequence that we're doing of time, you know, breathe in. Expand, 
and I'm kind of on the outside of my hips. But again, I'm still engaged and still round. Hands, even the fingers are still engaged. Part three is I wrap down. So this is like wrapping, scooting around and press down. Now, if you're used to Bagua, this might be familiar. Cheng Bagua, this is one of the mother poems called Fierce Tiger Descends from the Mountain. It's supposed to be very good for helping uh, understanding defense of like the lower body. And your palms are engaged down. We kind of rotate the forearms out 40. I've seen here, which would almost be like an opening stance from Tai Chi, and I've seen out 45s. So we're like halfway through already. Then we come up to the granddaddy. Five, six is that Pong one we talked about. Seven, we raise up over the head. Now remember that I have other videos about this. The idea of that forearm and that whole arm and the way it is here. Now I'm not lifting the elbows up, which engages the shoulder. I'm keeping the shoulders low and I'm being very careful with the angle of my forearm. If I was to switch this to palms out, I'm not moving my elbow. I rotate the radius and the ulna and the palms out. So you see the same thing with splitting fist here. I'm not splitting a pouch one, uh, the cannon fist or the pounding fist. I'm here, rotate. I'm here, rotate the forearm. Now, as I rotate the forearm, I'm not lifting up. It's not upper block, upper block. I'm not doing that. I'm not trying to fight someone else's force with just the strength of my little, little baby girl shoulders. I'm not trying to do that. I can't do that. Everyone's bigger than me. Everyone's stronger than me. Uh, <laughs> what I'm not trying to fight that. It's too exhausting. I'm old. I'm tired. I got injuries. I just want to read the Silmarillion for like the 50th time. I'm good trying to not somebody out. But same thing now we've got in like, again, Yang style Taiji, because it's a little bit different than the Chen style. The white crane spreads its wings where you come up here. I mean, you know, you got the cat stance going on and everything. But as we come up, we come up. Now watch the forearm. The forearm rotates. And the palm's up. I'm not coming up here and lifting my shoulder or shooting the elbow up. So as we're here, got to watch the angle with the elbow. And then that rotates over and down. And then it's basically what we did here, we're doing here, except the wrists are at shoulder height, elbows down. Sounds familiar from other stuff. I know, because it is familiar from other stuff. So that is... Um, that is, that is basically the basic sequence of each one. I have other uh, sort of videos on that. Now, one of the things that, that I like to do for my standing things, especially if I'm doing like a sequence where I'm switching legs. So, I'll, you know, two, two, three or four, maybe sometimes five minutes, something like that. And I'll switch and I'll switch and I'll switch. Uh, I'm not going to go over Santi here. Santi shirt from, from Shingy. I got a whole other thing with that. We're talking about the five elements. I got a couple videos on how to do that and everything. I'm not bringing that in here right now. Um, there might be other times where I kind of redo that. This is not going to be one of those times, as especially since that's not one going to be one of the things that I'm going to do for the sequence with this. But just know, in general, Santi is freaking phenomenal as a standing posture. It's freaking phenomenal as anything you want it to be for. Anything in internals, fighting, uh, so the self-defense, even, you know, being able to do stuff sport-wise. Uh, Tuisho, Sancho, Sanda, Sancho, self-defense, Santisha is amazing. You want the health. You want the meditation. You want the Qigong. Santisha is freaking amazing for all of it. Uh, but again, I got other stuff with that. I'm not going to get into that right now. What I'm going to talk about first, though, legs. So if we're used to kind of here, again, I got my little white socks on to kind of contrast with my black trousers here. 
is the same sort of posture that we've had in, in other things. So one foot, my right foot's going to be my back foot right now, 45 degrees. Now again, that knee is going to be over that foot, keeping the hip in line, tailbone tucked in. I'm just going to kind of come out. This doesn't have to be a big, huge bow stance. We're not going into like real crazy other stances. We're going to make it maybe like a sort of truncated bow stance. So we don't have to be out super long or anything. We just want to step out a little bit here. We want to be about 70, 30. So 70% of your weight on the back, 30, you know, 60, 40, if you're really having a problem, but maybe we lean more towards 70, 30. My front foot is straight. Now, again, I got to be careful how I do it. I'm pigeon toed, so I kind of have to cheat out a little bit more. So you got to be careful of what your body has and what your body is. The ideal is straight 45. There's 90. You know, this is perfect, like 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, you want right in between. My knee, if I was to bend it further, out over the foot and the toes. So I'm going to have it where about 70, 30. You know, readjust how you need to, keep the back straight, sitting on those legs. Now, with the back leg and foot at 45, the hips, therefore the dantian, navel, for, uh, you know, lower and middle dantians and shoulders are all going to face 45 together. The head is going to face straight. Now this is part of the E, the intent part of it, is that you want your head and your eyes and your focus to be where it's going to go. So when we're talking about where it's going to go now in almost a martial aspect of it, you're not going to be looking over here if someone's right here. You're going to be looking right at them. And you want to practice that intent and practice that focus. So now even if we take out the fighting of it, schoolwork. You know, work, work, uh, paying attention to a significant other or even your friends uh, or your animals or paying attention to when you're shopping. You know, so many times everywhere I go, driving uh, in the car, out of the car, shopping, hanging out, even in the frickin woods, nobody pays attention. No one has any focus. No one has any any awareness of what they're doing, where they're going, how they're doing, how they're coming across. You know, there, I've seen it where, for example, I'm on the dragon dance team for the OCA in Cleveland. Now, there's nine people on the dragon. They got big sticks. So the dragon's sitting up like here, right? So it's big, bright red and gold, nine-person dragon with sticks. So it's eye up in the air, moving around and flopping and, and curling and, and waving and all this other stuff. So there's nine people in a row with this swinging bright red dragon with this big head. If we're praying with it, it's got, you know, glowing eyes, got the mouth thing doing all this other thing like that. A lot of times, like, people in the in the dragon, especially, you know, Wayne in the front, is like saying, hey, 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 all this other stuff. We've got people on drums. we got people on cymbals and on the bells. And then my pale butt is walking around. i got a bright red tunic on. And everything I got is like a sleeveless one because I overheat so bad doing this. I just I want to pass out. So I got the sleeveless one so I can vent some of my freaking Viking heat that just generates out of out of this soul of hell I have or something. I just I, So I got this bright red tunic. I got my gleaming porcelain vampire skin flashing out there. And I have either the big flag or the pearl because I do both the flag um, solo in the beginning. And then they set up a thing. I do the pearl solo. And then after that, the, the dragon chases the pearl through the whole thing. So I am exhausted by this. But a lot of times, we'll, we even do doing our, our, our presentation, let alone just parading whatever grounds. So I got this, uh, this big, bright, red, spangly ball that's spinning around on this big pole. And I'm whipping it around and doing all my other stuff. And it spins. And it makes a sound when it spins. And people are still, huh, huh, what? They're, they're walking through our presentation. So there's a couple hundred people in a big frickin' circle. We've made announcements, got all this other stuff. We got drums, cymbals, people jumping around and all this other thing. And there's 12 people out there doing stuff. People are walking through the presentation. Or if we're parading through things, boom, 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 and, and people are clueless. 
walking into us. It's one, th it's, it's one thing if they're coming up from behind, but at some point in time, you got to have some situational awareness of, oh, look, 12 people and a big freaking dragon's right behind me. Nothing. See it driving all the time. So this is going to help sort of train that awareness and that focus and that observation that, and, and listening. Listening is different than hearing. Observing is different than seeing. This is going to help train all that to make us be able to get the, 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 the potential that we have, not only to, to make ourselves better, but to interconnect with other people and our environment better. This is going to help train that. So everything has to be the, the alignment with the energy is a certain way, and that includes looking straight. Now, the body is here because it's, we're trying to get a certain kind of energy and stuff going on, but we want straight out. And in some of these, even if you like uh, spotting, call it spotting when dancing. So when they twirl, they don't get dizzy. They pick a spot, twirl, come around, shoot. Oop, I'm sorry, shoot right for it. And then they spin and boom, find the spot again. So we almost kind of want that and tr it's training our focus for it. So that way it's not we're watching TV, reading a book and playing with our phone and 12 other things. We, we can actually have a conversation with someone for more than two seconds without having to look at the phone or do something else because we can't interact as human beings anymore. This is going to help train that. So we're going to base these on basically the Zong Zong. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, and there's there's several different things we're going to do. First, what we're, we're going to have it itchy. So we're going to keep that sort of curve, that circle. And we're going to change the levels a little bit. And there's variations we can change the levels more. Right now, we're just going to change it a little bit. So if I'm here when I'm straight forward, when I have the one leg back, one leg forward, the back, uh, the, the arm that corresponds with the back leg is going to be slightly lower. So I almost have like thumb shoulder height. The lead hand is going to be wrist shoulder height. We're going to keep that circle and keep holding there. And when we switch, there's a couple ways you can do this. What I'm going to do for it is I'm going to bring all my weight to that back right leg, lift up my left. My left foot's going to go 45. My front foot's going to step forward and straight. I'm going to change my arms and keep that. Second posture we'll do will be the same. The feet are, are going to be the same thing. It's going to be 45 and straight, about 70-30 weight distribution. And I'm going to when I'm going to change, I'm not just going to change. I'm going to bring all the weight back, bring the foot in, step to the, uh, still you can see it. So I'm going to be here, bring all the weight in, step out 45, shift my weight. So full, empty, step out, resettle the weight. Back, in, out, in, out. Resettle the weight. So, you know, uh, normal internal rules apply that you do not move a leg if there is weight in it. And that's how we're going to work that. So, posture one here. Posture two is going to be the same thing, but we're going to press the palms down. And we want to also, so this is going to have like a feeling of expansion. Like we've got a ball there. We're keeping that center line safe. Pungjing. This one's going to be more anjing. Part of anjing, even though it's like push, like pushing a car, there's a downward part to it too. So we're going to be here, and thought of that intent, we're going to keep that pung circle round the expansive energy, but we're going to think about it also pressing down as well. We're going to do the same thing, other side. Then we're going to split and open. So we're going to be here, open. Now, I'm not straight back, because if you can see straight back, there's tension all through here, this entire part, tension. Not only that, now I'm going to try and turn. Oh, I just changed it. So my navel and my, my sternum are here. If I stretch back too far, you can see now they're out of line. I don't want this out of line. There's like one thing in one Qigong aspect where now this thoracic hinge is, is sort of where we're twisting, where the sternum's going here and the, the navel's staying straight. Whole rest of the time, everything else we want to do, shoulders and hips, 
this is all in line, that thoracic hinge doesn't twist and, and ring in the torso. All this is staying together. Now, in order to do that with the hands coming out, again, here's like 90 degrees, and this would be like single whip and like the simplified Beijing 24 Taiji. Yang style goes 45 degrees back from that. So technically like 135 degree angle is what we want here. And that's what we're going to have with that. But with the elbow down, it's not going to be as, as expansive with it. We want to stay, keep those elbows dropping down and the palms sort of pushing out. And then we can do that on both sides. So it's almost like if you're used to like Tai Chi kick, you come up, cross the wrists, expand and kick out, we're kind of doing that. What I might do, at the very least, introduce you to it too. So there's like Yang style Pung, which is, you know, we're, for here, I'm really doing is just rotating the forearm and setting this up here. So we can play Pung here, can also play Pung here, which is on Yang style, but also in the simplified one as well. And um, I think Chen Bing's sort of short Chen 13 routine has something like this in it too. So again, we're playing with the same each one postures, just in slightly different modes. So we might go in that too if I'm feeling frisky with it. So those are the kind of two um, uh, sort of you know sequences that we can we can go on and do little uh, meditations, little uh, guided meditations with that too. Uh, I had to take a bunch of stuff out of my car. Um, as my table always looks like that. I have my coats. I got like three or four coats. I like jackets and coats, and they're kind of there. Most of them. I got a bunch of other stuff hanging up. And then I'm, I'm starting to get holiday stuff. There we go. I don't know how to make circles. There we go. Dyslexic. Holiday stuff's kind of getting ready to go, too. So, uh, and then... Oh, it was like the 41 or 42 of the 80 plus Agatha Christie books I've read. I've got at least one more there and another one over there too. I need to read. I'm getting there. Uh, and then, of course, Galadriel and uh, Gandalf. Nothing if not consistent. Um, well, sometimes. Anyway. Uh, so that's the setup for that, and it's going really way longer than I meant to, uh, but I want to make sure that, but it, it, I'm, I'm kind of combining two things together with that. Um, so there we go. That's the sort of setup and preview of those two different standing sort of guided meditations that we're going to do here soon uh, as well. So we got kind of two intros to Zong Zong and then the, the each one and then the the, um, not sure exactly how to word that, but you know, the, the alternate standing posts. And, uh, so we're introing kind of both of those. So thank you very much. Good hunting, like, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube -y stuff. Thank you.